Up next, we'll be switching into something a little different. We'll be getting into some poetry. And here to present some poetry, we have Alejandrex or Alejandre Martinez. Their pronouns are they, them, theirs, el, ella. They are an anti-nationalist, anti-capitalist, Zika next punk scholar, poet, and Woo! a recent graduate of Washington State University. Woo! Please welcome Alejandre. So like, what's up with that, right? Mm -hmm. Also, we're on indigenous lands. Um, mm -hmm. And then a quick encouragement uh, to all of y'all about the wall that will be just gonna... coming up. Um, in terms of the wall that will be going up, remember that healing is just as revolutionary as fighting, and it contributes to resistance just as well. Do what is healthy for you, um, and be mindful not to harm others as you heal, and I encourage you to take action, but be careful, because white supremacy works to fatigue and to burn you out. So remember to heal. Um, about my poem, um, this is not an attack, it's a critique. Um, I think from what I've learned from my time with working with Mecha and Chicanx activist organizations and in a Chicanx activist-centered space here at a uh, predominantly white institution is that the Chicanx community centers itself um, and its colonial interest first, no matter what. The movement at Washington State is working to equate itself with colonial white supremacist institutions rather than working to tear them down. For example, respectability, politics, machismo, anti-blackness, and anti-queerness. Um, so here's the beginning of my set of poems called um, A Letter to Chicano Men. Um, Alexandria Ocosia Cortez is not going to save us. She is going to funnel and feed the necropolitical machine that breeds the white colonial air that you love to breathe. The white political system is not going to save us. The hierarchical political system is not going to save us. The whiteness you cling to is not going to save us. Throwing yourself into politics is not going to save us. So um, here it goes, a letter to Chicano Men, part one, Carlos and Max. Shari Moraga once told me in a rushed whisper that Chicanos are an occupied nation in an occupied nation. She held my hand through the violence of Chicano men, of Chicano fathers. She barred me up for the, the only people that care about uh, gender inclusive Spanish are in the US. She taught me about stretched smiles and exasperated nods for moments of, you're taking this too seriously, that you can't put an X in Espanol porque the O is already inclusive, and Spanish doesn't work like that porque the O is already inclusive to who? You, because I've never seen myself, heard myself in Chicano. And I'm thinking, do you even see the ways in which you help murder the help the murder of our hermanas in Mexico y aquí? Where in the last three years, 257 queer, hotex, trans, hermanas, 257 of your supposed people were murdered because you fucking couldn't say Latinx. But like, viva la raza, I guess. And Zadua gave me a sir, how to survive the fuckery. She set me up for the trans people are just myths in Chicano men. At least 202 murders of members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community occurred between 2014 and 2016 in Mexico. And I see the way the sun beats on the backs of our padres, primos, y hermanos. Pero no se estás matando a todas, y la sangre de tus hermanas is on your culture and on your hands. But like, viva la so I guess. Um, part two, letters to Chicano men. To all the Franciscos in my life. My mom... My mom would always tell me that she knew I was going to be strange, not like other little brown girls, lanyard in one hand, paleta in the other, like a banged bobbed hybrid. When I was a baby, a nopal fell on my face, spina slipping into pores. Growing up, my father would throw my heart around, slapping it with butch, dyke, and gordita. Every shifting of my spirit of Francisco Spinas, like Spinas, find ways into piercing themselves into my audacity of self-worth. Forever scars mistaken for pores, like almost as if they belong there. Like scars and pores, almost as if like all the hardworking men in our community work and pick and build and mow and bury Spinas into my existence. Um, and so this one's called uh, For My Brown Sisters, because I'm not a monster, so. <laughs> 
For my brown sisters, a letter. Um, this one's a little more casual, I guess. Um, how much time do I have? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, Alright, how's everybody doing? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I was nervous. That's nerve wracking. Um, but indígena, and don't you forget that, because you will. This one is for my beautiful, intelligent brown sisters, and don't you let anyone tell you any less, because they will. This is for you, because ain't no one telling you that you are beautiful and that you are the movement. The ones, this one is for the girls who look mean and so corn has para tamales and water, because it's never for you. And this one, this one is for all the girls who were too dark, too dark for brown moms and too dark for brown men. This one is for my Flaca sisters, the ones who don't fit the expectation. This one is for my indigenous sisters who look like lost paintings of better times, not perfect times. This one is for my anti-familia, decolonial, pro-cultura sisters. This one is for my trans sisters who worship La Virgen de Guadalupe and eat pan dulce. For my sisters who... Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Lito. For my sisters who... Eat pigs, snouts, and chorones con limón for my vegan brown sisters who eat nopales y molen con tempe. This one is for my Mexican raised U.S. born sisters. This one is in solidarity with our sisters in Arizona who hide from the sun and gringos in blue. This one is for my sisters who don't speak Spanish. And this one is for my Afro-Mexicana hermanas because everyone tries to erase you. For the Tejana woman who ain't Mexican and ain't American. Because everything of your history was stolen. Here's for the girls whose depression is unseen. This is for the girls whose thighs weren't thick enough, for, whose, hair is an oil, whose hair is thin. Because they'll never be satisfied. Because everything you are is what Chicano men have never rendered as possible. Because everything you are is a threat to the colonial dream. So this one's for you because it's never for you. Because they'll call you mija, leave you to do all the work, and take all the credit. But it's cool because, you know, for la casa. <laughs>